Okay, this video, excuse some of the lighting, etc., is about how to overcome anger. Now, somebody who's never been angry does not know. Somebody who's slightly been angry doesn't know. But many of us, in fact, studies show pretty much all of us have been deeply deeply hurt. We've been maliciously shamed. Now, what is a human being? There are many levels, many different things, but for the purpose of this conversation, a human being is their self-image, which is what we can call the ego. It's the perception of self. If I didn't perceive this as being me, I said point at me, I point here. It's an interesting experiment actually. If I say close your eyes and point at yourself, I point here. It's an interesting thing. Why? Because when I'm awake, my emotions are me, but when I'm closing my eyes, I can't identify with my body as much. I identify more with my mind. The point is that I'm identifying with myself. So the reason, I mean, it's very difficult to understand that, that, you know, your consciousness is not you. Consciousness is a, is a spiritual force, like my computer saying, I am this computer. So let me ask you a question. Are you the hardware? Well, it can't be the hardware because if you're already saying I am, that means there's something outside of, of, of the self that's talking, right? Like the famous line, I think, therefore I am. But the, the logic of that is completely mistaken. Because who is the am that is thinking? <laughs> now, just because you say, I think, therefore I am, but who is the am that is actually making that thought? So the point is, if the computer says, I am a computer, well, the software or the hardware? Because the software can think, but the hardware can't think. The hardware is dead. Same thing with my body. My body is basically 20 gallons of water. That's basically what a body is, 20 gallons of water. Well, 20 gallons of water doesn't think. So it's my soul that's thinking, but that soul came into this being, and as it was born, and as my consciousness identified with myself, so I see this as who I am. And the reason I say that is that, so if I am this, and there's a famous principle that says, es every living thing wants its continued existence. So this is why people go on holy wars. I don't know whether it was Muslims or Christians, or even Jews. I mean, I thank God Jews are not against anyone, but they'll even give up their life for Judaism because you identify with your religion. So even somebody, I don't know, they have a company and they try to save the company even if it's losing money. Why? It's just to make money. But no, no, it's part of your pride. It's part of what you identified with. We identify with our family. We could give our lives for people in the family or even for other people that we identify with if we do identify with them. So the point is that when someone shames you, what happens is there's a perception of self and a perception of other. And often what happens is that the one other person represents to you the wider community. And so when they shame you, you think that people, not one moron, but people think that you are bad. And that's like a, an affront, that's like an insult, not even an insult, it's like a death to the self. That's why in Judaism, it is forbidden to say anything bad about someone. Somebody actually did it tonight. He says, well, I say it in front of him. Well, first of all, if you say something in front of him, that's rude to him. And if you say it behind him, that's murder. Why? Because you're taking this person. What is a person? What do we say? Basically an image. What do I know of you, for example? It's an image. It's a, it's a sense. And if somebody says something bad, they're murdering the person. Because now my sense of that other person is murdered. That's why... You know, there was a Jewish lady very impressed with her. When she learned the laws of not speaking badly about others, she stopped being a journalist. These people are guilty. And you should know, people don't realize this, that 
this is a world where you get to do what you want, but you get to heaven, anything you said, they say any conversation you had with your wife, you're judged. This is my wife. Yeah, but you weren't allowed to be rude once. Somebody, you want somebody to be rude to you once? Anything you said. Now imagine a person's a reporter. And especially today where everything goes on the internet. Do you know what it means? It's murder. It's pure. It's, it's like worse than cannibalism. At least the guy was cooked. Yeah, the guy's got to live with the shame forever. It's a horrific thing. So the point that I'm trying to bring out is that you know, we have to be very careful not to shame another human being. And the bottom line is that when we think about who we are and we have this image, so in a way, that's why Jews never took anti-Semitism personal. There was a guy, an amazing guy. He was like a hero to this guy wrote a story. There was a radio show where people would write in their story. So he spoke about his father, speaking about this guy as being a very great hero. Make a long story short, this person really saved a lot of Jews in the Holocaust, but he was able to overcome everything the Nazis did, kill his wife. And, but when he came to Israel, people accused him falsely of being a capo, which was a terrible thing to be accused of, that they were like a collaborator, sort of like collaborator with the Nazis. And so he, he actually kind of died of depression. So somebody that was so tough, he was actually a real strong man. He would go around doing shows. Somebody that was so strong, and yet he couldn't handle, he says, what the Nazis couldn't do to him physically, the tongues did to him mentally. And we're, we all know that. We're all sensitive. Why is that the case? Because we, if we, if we kind of um, respect people, a certain person and that person kind of lets us down that's that's where it becomes difficult to us you know somebody that you 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 had a low low expectation of them let's say maybe even a child and the child says something so it's not a big deal but if somebody that you respected an adult or something or someone of your community particularly the higher the person is the more painful would be the criticism I mean, even a, a self-criticism can be very painful and so we have to get over um, the anger that many of us hold because it hurts deeply. It was like somebody murdered, but they like put a knife in the person's heart, but they never took it out. And many of us carry that kind of an anger. And tonight, it's really something I knew for a long time, but I practice an exercise. I'm translating a book of the Baal and it's really quite amazing because the Baal Shem Tov teaches us how to overcome anger. And again, using this analogy of the knife in the heart, a lot of people have that knife in the heart and it really destroys their life because it's like our heart is like a soup. You know, if you put in this cup, I don't know, fresh vegetables is going to be good. But if you put some poison in it, it ain't going to be good. Anger is poison. Literally, it's poison. And we can live with that, and it poisons us. There are actually studies that if you forgive someone, it has a 30% reduction in blood pressure. 30% just from forgiveness, so that it's pretty serious stuff. So, I have a book of Allah Love, my fourth chapter is on forgiveness, different techniques. But here's, I think, the most important technique. Remember, the heart is like a cup. In the cup, there are various different ingredients. So the thing with ingredients is ingredients balance each other out. Let's say I have, I don't know, some sharp ingredients. I put some onion in. So if I want to balance the onion, I can put something bland. I could put some carrot in. If I want to make it sweet, I could put some honey in. So you see, the, the big mistake that kind of old-fashioned psychology made is and basically it's what our brain does which is really stupid is we try to fix the problem in the past but you know if the knife came into your heart you don't have to take the knife out to fix the problem that's not the issue because really the issue is not what happened in the past it's how you're feeling about it in the present at every moment you're feeling the present it's just that the past 
knife is still in the heart. So you haven't taken it out of the heart. You're still feeling that pain. You're still feeling the anger. It's that need for vengeance usually, which you didn't get. And that's what's eating you up. It's not what happened that's the problem. And the proof is it can happen to other people. It may not eat you up. But it's the issue that is bothering you. So again, when you put, let's say you've got this cup and everything goes into the cup, but never, nothing can come out of the cup. But you could always put something extra in. You can't take out the onion from the soup. If you're making a soup and you put it in, you can't take it out. It got, it got mixed in. But what you can do is you can put in a new ingredient that will get rid of that flavor. And what are the two ingredients that get rid of anger? Listen carefully. You want to live a happy life? You can't live an angry life. It is love. Think about everyone you love and everything that was ever good to you. And joy, happiness. Think about the future. Mashiach is going to come to the world. It's going to be awesome. It's never been better. Love and joy. If you put love and joy in your heart, nothing is going to matter. And the proof is like this. Let's say I said to you, you just won the lotto. You think your pain from yesterday bothers you? It doesn't, because right now you're happy. So it proves that if you push in, and it has to be on a daily basis, on a constant basis, gratitude, you wake up in the morning, you thank God for your top ten blessings, you help other people, that's the only thing that makes us happy. The past will disappear. The present will appear.